be solving this problem called Savaray divisibility. It is a continuation of the two previous problems, Savaray sums 1 and 2. So before you solve this problem, I would recommend solving the previous two problems and checking out the video editorial for both of them. I will put a link to both video editorials in the description box. And so let's get started solving this problem. So we are given an array of n integers and our task is to count the number of subarrays where the sum of values is divisible by n. So you could see the similarities with the previous problems. In the previous problems we were asked to count the number of subarrays where the sum of values was equal to some value x here instead of being uh, equal to some value x we need to find the number of subarrays that are divisible by some value n uh, as for the constraints n can be as large as 2 times 10 to the fifth and the values ai are between negative a billion and a billion so this is the first example uh, let's go ahead and try to make sense of it and try to come up with a solution so this is our example and as you can see by inspection this is the only subarray whose sum is divisible by 5 the sum of this subarray is 10 and it's clearly divisible by 5 and it's the only subarray that fulfills that condition no other subarray does Okay, so to sum up what we did in the previous problem, we had, we, we, we started by uh, a naive approach, which was in O of n cube, and consisted in going through all subarrays and, and calculating their sum in O of n, then we, then we checked if that sum was equal to x or not. And we could do the same thing in this case, we would just go through all subarrays and see if, if that sum is divisible by n or not. Then we improved that approach to n squared by using prefix sums to calculate the sum of a subarray in O of 1 instead of calculating that sum in O of n. So this was using uh, prefix sums. And we could do the same thing here, like we could calculate the sum of the subarray in the same way and checking if, the, if it is divisible by n. Then uh, for subarray sub sums 1, we came up with an approach in O of n using sliding window. And we said this would only work if all the values were greater than or equal to zero because or actually they have to be strictly greater than zero because the logic then was that we would only move our pointer as long as it was uh, less than uh, the target x and finally for uh, subarray sums 2 we came up with an approach in O of n log n which is the maps and prefix sums. And to clarify what was, what was asked of us in those two problems, we were given n and x and some values a, uh, a1 through an, and we needed to find a subarray whose sum was equal to x. And my claim here is that we can translate this problem to this exact same problem with a twist. And then we would use this similar approach to solve this problem. Okay, so a bit of algebra first. This problem was over Z. And by Z, let me change that color, sorry this was over z and by z i mean uh, all integers positive and negative like all integers from negative infinity to positive infinity 
and here I claim that this problem is is exactly the same as finding subarrays whose sum is equal to zero. Like this is the same as finding subarrays whose sum is equal to zero, but this time over z mod and z like z and z and this is like this is the integers modulo n so all the values that exist in this set are 0 1 up to n minus 1 so if some interval is divisible by n it means that its sum is equal to 0 mod n so this is pretty much the exact same thing as the previous problem and for a bit of terminology, we could check this. So this this uh, symbol z mod n z is the set of all congruence classes of the integers for modulo n, and it is called the ring of integers modulo n. So that's exactly what I said. It's all numbers from zero to n minus one, and. Uh, if n is 5 for example this would be 0 5 10 and so on and this would be 1 6 11 and so on okay so let's go back to our drawing board and all what we need to do is to take these numbers and move them from z from z to z mod n z Okay, so 3 is fine because 3 mod 5 is 3. This is 1, this is 2, this is 2 as well because 7 mod 5 is 2, and this is 4. And now let's go ahead and mm, compute the prefix sum. So we would start with that dummy value 0 as we said. This is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 plus 6 is 8 and 4 plus 8 is 12. I just wrote these values first and now I'm gonna take the modulo again. So uh, now we will uh, continue and take these values modulo 5. So we will get 0, 3, 4, 6 modulo 5 gives us 1, 8 modulo 5 gives us 3 and 12 modulo 5 gives us 2. Then as we did with the previous problem, we will have our map here. So this is our map. And we'll just go through these values. We'll start with 0. Have we seen a 0 before? Remember in the previous problem, we were targeting the sum x. And it, at each value, we were asking ourselves, have we seen the value? Uh, this sum minus x and now since this uh, since x is equal to 0 we we'll ask ourselves have we seen 0 minus 0 which is just 0 so have we seen 0 before and the answer is no so we will not increment our count however we will state that we saw this value in our map so 0 has been seen once then we would move on to this 3 have we seen 3 before and the answer is no so just increment the number of times we've seen 3. Moving on to 4. Have we seen 4 before? No. So just increment this. Have we seen 1 before? And the answer is also no. So just increment 1. Now we are at 3. Have we seen 3 before? And the answer is yes. So since we've seen 3 before at this particular value, uh, at this particular position, it means that this interval has to be divisible by 5 because 3 minus 3 is equal to 0 mod 5. And indeed, this is the exact interval that we said was equal to 10 and divisible by 5. So that's why we increment our counter by 1 and we increment the number of times we saw 3 by 1. Uh, and now moving on to 2. Have we seen 2 before? The answer is no. So just increment the number of times we saw 2 by 1. And our final answer is just 1. Uh, so to make this idea clear, let's move on to this example. 
We'll do the same thing. Let's start by computing the prefix sum. So we'll start with zero or let's use orange as we did before. So we'll start with zero, two, one, negative two, zero, negative seven. I'm sorry, this, this is wrong. So two, three, zero, two, negative five, two, zero, six, 14, 15, 11, and 21. Great. Now we're gonna compute these values modulo 11. And we notice that here we, we have some negative values like here. And so what are we gonna do with this? So we're gonna get to them. So zero mod 11 is zero, two, three, zero, two, negative five. Here it is worth mentioning that in Z and Z, the neutral element is N. As is zero, the neutral element in Z. Like adding zero in Z is, is the same as doing nothing. Like seven plus zero is just seven. And this is a, also true in Z and Z. It's like three mod five is three and three plus five mod five is also three. So adding five is exactly the same as doing nothing. So we could add uh, 11 here to bring this value between 0 and 11 so if we add 11 here this becomes 6 and this is 2 0 6 this becomes 4 this is 0 and this is 10 and we'll do the same thing this is our map and this is our counter have we seen 0 before no so just say that we saw zero once moving on to two we haven't seen two before we haven't seen three before now we are at this position have we seen zero before and the answer is yes we've seen it here so this means that this interval has to be divisible by 11 and indeed the sum of this interval is zero and zero is divisible by 11. so we increment our count by one and we increment the number of times we saw zero by one. Moving on to two, have we seen a two before? Yes. So we've seen a two here. So this means that this interval is divisible by 11. And indeed the sum of this interval is zero and it is indeed divisible by 11. So we increment our count by one and we increment the number of times we've seen two by one. Moving on to six, we've not we haven't seen a six before, so just say that we saw a six. Moving on to two, have we seen a two before? And the answer is yes, and we saw two twice, so that's why we increment our count by two, and we get that this interval as well as this one is divisible by eleven, and indeed negative seven plus seven is zero, and this whole interval is equal to zero and both of them are divisible by 11. Moving on to this value, uh, we, need, we also need to increment two by one. So moving on to this value, uh, have we seen a zero before? The answer is yes, and we saw it twice. So that's why we increment our count by two. And this means that this interval is divisible by 11. And notice here, that the sum is indeed divisible by 11 since it's equal to 0 and this whole interval is also divisible by 11 and indeed the sum of this whole interval is 0 so and we increment the number of times we saw 0 now to this value have we seen a 6 before and the answer is yes uh, so this interval is divisible by 11 and now the sum is not equal to 0 it is equal to 11 so we have to increment our count by 1 and increment the number of times we saw 6 by 1 and we'll just keep on doing the same thing until we get to the end of the array so I think you got the idea now let's move on to the code Okay, so this is my code. 
So we start by reading n and the size of our array. We'll declare a vector of n, and then we will scan those values. And then I will declare uh, a variable of type long long, which would be equal to sum. And this variable will just hold uh, the sum so far. Like I'll just keep incrementing the sum. Like if I am at this position, then my sum would be two. And if I am at this position, my sum would be zero. So I'll start sum from here. And after each iteration, I'll just add this value to it. And this way, I'll just store my prefix sum in just one value instead of storing the whole array. Uh, and this comes in handy because I am only interested in the last, in the current position of the prefix sum. I don't care about these values. I would have stored them in my map anyways. Then I'll declare my map uh, and it will map long longs to ints. Then I'll uh, state that I saw a zero before and this is uh, to, to state that there is this dummy zero that we add and this will allow us to take the whole array uh, as an answer. Then I'll declare my count that will count the number of subarrays that are valid and notice here that it is of type long long because the answer could be larger than max of int in case for example all values were equal to zero and then any subarray would sum up to zero and it would be divisible by any n so and in that case the number of the total number of possible subarrays would be n times n minus 1 over 2 which is equal to n choose 2 and this is of order 10 to the 10th so that's why I ha it has to be of type long long then I'll just uh, look through all the values and after each uh, at each position I will add the value mod n to my sum as we saw in the example and that value might be negative so that's why I will add an n to it to make it positive and I will also take it modulo n to keep some modulo n and then I will check if I saw that value before if I saw it before then I'll just add it to my count like the number of times I've seen this value before and in all cases I will just increment the number of times I saw that sum and that's it and at the very end I'll just print count so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and submit so that worked Thank you for watching, see you in the next video, bye bye.